Hi everyone, Pastor Jimmy at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. We're going to continue our study on Genesis and the characteristics of God. We've gone through the first six chapters of the book of Genesis, looking at the different characteristics of God. Today we want to continue our study by looking at Genesis chapter 7. So if you want to pause the video, take a second, grab your Bible, read Genesis chapter 7, and then come back. All right, now that you've had a chance to read Genesis chapter 7, we're going to continue our study looking at the characteristics and attributes of God. We're not studying everything that happens in the chapter. We're just looking at the different characteristics of God that we can learn from the book of Genesis in each chapter. So we've already gone through 22 different characteristics that we've seen in God in the first six chapters already. And so today, our 23rd characteristics of God that we're going to look at is that the God is sovereign or the sovereignty of God. Well, what does this mean that God is sovereign? Well, this means that he possesses supreme or ultimate power. This means that he is the supreme authority over all things, and all things are under his control. And so this, there's not a better example early on in the Bible than in Genesis chapter 7. God shows us his sovereignty over everything or his control over everything in Genesis chapter 7. We see God can command Noah to get into the boat, to build the ark, to do these things. We see God commanding the animals to come to Noah. We see God commanding the animals to get onto the ark. We see God commanding nature. We see God commanding the forces of nature. We see God deciding who is righteous and who is not righteous. And we see God shutting them into the ark. So we see God in his sovereignty. We see God in his total control. And so what we learn from this is that God is a sovereign God. God is a God who has total control and total power over the world and everything in the world. We also see here that even though God is a, a God that has total power, He is also a God that uh, has mercy on us. He's a God that shows mercy throughout the uh, chapter. And we see that God showed His power to man through the flood, and He showed His power to man through controlling the animals and through controlling nature and causing this flood to happen. But we also see him showing mercy to man by saving Noah. By saving uh, Noah and his family, he showed mercy upon mankind. He didn't completely destroy all of mankind. We see God, as we look throughout the entire Bible, we will see God as a sovereign God. We will continue to notice and understand and see him show his sovereignty throughout the Bible, his absolute power. He'll show it to people throughout history, and he still shows us today that he is sovereign, that he has absolute authority, and he has absolute power in our lives today. If you notice here, everyone was submissive to God. Noah, the animals, nature, it didn't matter who it was. Even those that rebelled against God were still being submissive to God because they couldn't save themselves. So God showed us his complete authority and power here in Genesis chapter 7. The next thing we see in Genesis chapter 7 is we see God as being the protector. We see God as protector. Genesis chapter 7 verses 13 through 16 says... On the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Jabeth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. They and every beast after its kind, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh, in which is the breath of life. So those that entered male and female of all flesh went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. We see God shutting the door on Noah, his family, and all the animals. And this was done for Noah's protection. It was done for the protection of the animals. It was done really for the protection of everyone and everything upon the ark. Noah couldn't be tempted to open the door during the time, the early days of the flooding and the early days of, of him being on the ark. He couldn't be tempted to open it for friends or family that may be still trying to survive. Uh, if they were trying to get in, they could not. It was not up to Noah, for God had shut them in. Noah was, protect, was protected from the responsibility of what was happening outside. And so God's protection was all around Noah, and it, his protection is still around us today. I know sometimes it's hard for us to see God's protection with all the things that go on in our life, all the troubles that we have. But God's protection is still there for us. God's protection is still with us. Notice he didn't remove Noah from the flood. He didn't remove Noah from the circumstances. He just protected Noah through the circumstances. 
And so a lot of times in our life when, when God seems not to be there and we're still going through troubled times and tribulations, we have to remember that God is still with us. God is still watching over us. He is still protecting us through those troubled times the way that he was with Noah. And so we see God's sovereignty and his power today, and we see God's protection in our life today. So as we continue to, to go through chapter 7, we see God's total and complete power, but he uses that power also to protect us. So as you go through your life, as you go through each day, just remember that God loves you enough that he protects you and he cares for you through all the things that are going on in, your, in our life. Join us in our next study as we look at the characteristics and attributes of God in chapter 8.